The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public shame and disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son. And he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Let's stand and sing together. Please be seated in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you so very much for being here today on this, the second day of 2022, when we pray for a happy new year. People ask me all the time, Father Adam, what is the recipe for happiness in this life. Live each day, day by day. Don't live yesterday and don't live tomorrow, but live today, one day at a time. This moment is the most important moment right now because this moment will never come back. So let's take a moment and be aware of this moment of each moment. Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. I am has sent me to you, tell them. God says, I am this moment. Take your sandals off, Moses. For this ground is holy. I am not yesterday, Moses, or tomorrow. I am right now. I am. And that's what we should always remember in our own lives. That is the way we achieve heaven in our lives. Heaven being the presence of God. Now, the Bible teaches us that in heaven... You will be able to meet God face to face. Heaven is the presence of God. And God, we claim in this season of Christmas, 
didn't come to take us to heaven, but to bring heaven to us. We call that Emmanuel, God with us. So Jesus came to bring you heaven. How? Well, through the church, through the gift of community, what we are experiencing here right now, through the gift of the Son, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let's do that in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is the Holy Trinity, a family. Whenever I bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I'm saying, I don't want you to be alone. I want you to have a family. And God said that from the very beginning to Adam, didn't he? He says, it's not good for men to be alone. Now, Adam lived in paradise. So he was in the presence of God. And yet something was missing until he got Eve. He wasn't fulfilled. There was emptiness in his life. That's why we need one another. That's why you need a family. God is a family, and God wants you to have a family. And we form a family here. You know, I don't have friends here. I can have friends anywhere. Hmm? People today have 5,000 friends on Facebook. Friends. Huh? You are all my brothers and sisters. You are my family. Hmm? You have friends are not connected through blood, and we are all connected through blood to each other. So I'm stuck with you, <laughs> whether I like it or not. And you're stuck with me, whether you like it or not. And, you know, uh, I thank God every single day for all the sheep God gives me, every single one. Mm -hmm. And the goats. <laughs> <laughs> I could go down the list of animals. <laughs> but that's what the Bible says. If I thank God for the good things, shouldn't I thank God for the bad things? Because there's no bad things. It's just how I see it. All things work out for the good in our life. All things and all people that God sends our way. Huh? How do we meet God face to face? Well, we meet God meeting one another because you and I are made in the image and likeness of God. So you want to see God? Look around you. That's how we experience God. People, you know, are, are obsessed with images, putting, you know, sacred images of Jesus, of Mary everywhere. Oh, your, your, your homes sometimes look like religious goods stores. <laughs> Just look at all the people getting religious goods. Huh? Because that's easy to see the face of God in the merciful Jesus here huh? or in the statue of Mary. That's easy. But to see the image of God in your spouse, huh? I'm speaking, huh? in your wife, hello, uh, in your children, uh, in your co-workers, in all the people around you. You think that I like everybody that comes to church here? <laughs> I love everybody, but you know, sometimes I'm like, oh my, you know, here comes so-and-so. I know what they're going to tell me right be be before they open their mouth. I know already what they're going to say. Huh? That's how it is in life. Huh? So you want to see God? Look at the face of those around you. They are the image of God. They bring you God's presence. That's why we need God to perform surgery on our eyes, to give us new eyes, eyes of faith, to see my life differently, my family differently. Mm? Yes. 
my husband or wife differently or children differently or co-workers differently. When Mother Teresa was asked how by the reporter who put her out into the world, the BBC reporter, it's on YouTube, the original documentary. And during the documentary, the reporter asks her from the BBC, Mother, how could you do this? How can you take care of these maggot infested lepers who have wounds, who smell, all these people out here in Calcutta? How could you do this? I wouldn't do what you do for a million dollars. And Mother Teresa looks at the reporter and says, well, I wouldn't either, but I do it for Jesus. And I do it to Jesus because whatsoever you do to these, the least of my brothers and sisters, you do unto me at the end, Matthew 25, read it. That's how we will be judged, how we treat one another. It's like the people who come to me and say, Father, you know, I haven't killed anybody. And yet you say I should go to confession. Oh yeah. The last time you insulted your husband or your wife, or your brother, your sister, or your co-workers. Your tongue does killing. We're all murderers of one another with our insults, our gossip. Gossipers are like terrorists. You know, they throw a bomb out and they wait for it to explode. And uh, let's see who it kills. Huh? That is the work of the devil in our life. Calumny making things up about people and killing them. That's what the devil does in our life. We kill one another. We need our eyes to be operated on. When I weighed 325 pounds, there was a guy who said to me, he says, because <clears throat> people are terrible, really. He says to me, he says, you know, when I see you, I see a pig. And I looked at him and I said, well, when I see you, I see God. Hmm? What do you see and how do you see? Allow God to operate in your life. Joseph was a righteous man. You know, he could have exposed Mary to shame and they would have stoned her publicly, but he wanted to protect her, didn't he? Because he loved her. He didn't want to harm her. So he took upon himself the blame. Who was the bad guy in the story? He was. They all would have thought, oh, look, he impregnated her and left her. So he quietly decided, quietly decided before the angel came to him. He didn't want to hurt her because he loved her. When you love, you don't want to hurt the person that is in your life. You don't want to hurt them. You know, I'm so grateful for each and every one of you here, each and every one of you. As I told you at the beginning of this sermon, and I thank you so very much for coming. I'm so grateful that you are here. You know, there's nothing worse than the feeling that I am not wanted. Hmm? the feeling that nobody cares about me, the feeling that I don't belong. That's why we need Divine Mercy Church to make each one of us and each of those who come through our doors feel that they are wanted, that they have a family, that you do belong with all your faults and failures. You know, I spent time working in an orphanage in Oaxaca, Mexico during my time in the seminary a time that I often refer to in my sermons. And during these days, especially, I think of Victor. He's on my mind a lot. Victor, a young boy whose mother dropped him off in the orphanage because she was drug addicted and she was a prostitute. 
And so she dropped him off out of her love for him at the orphanage for the nuns to care for Victor. And after a while, his mom, Victor's mom, passed away from a drug overdose and Victor became available to be adopted. Bear with me for a moment as I tell you this story because I don't like to talk about it because it brings back that time. And this couple, this childless older couple took Victor home when he became available to be adopted. They took him home with, with them, but Victor was sexually abused by one of the clients of his mother. So he had a lot of issues. They burned him with cigarettes. The pimp would beat him. So he had a lot of issues and they manifested themselves in his behavior. So after only two weeks in the couple's home, they brought him back to the orphanage and dropped him off with the toys and everything else and the bags as I can still see it. And then in order to get rid of him, to get rid of Victor, they lied to him, telling him that they would come back for him. They never did. They dumped him, abandoned him, and lied to him. And it's hard for me to talk about it because I have this image of him at the window where they dropped him off. He would sit there and nothing, not even the lure of ice cream would take him away from the window as he was hoping that they would come back. He was waiting for them. They never did. And you know, Victor continues to be in my heart to this day because I got close to him as I tried to console him and be there for him. But what haunts me to this very day is when I was leaving the orphanage to come back to the USA to finish my studies for the priesthood. And he asked me, he says, why are you leaving? And I said, well, you know, I have to go back to the, to the United States. Why do you have to go? Well, that's where my mom is and my dad and my brother I have to go back to my family. My family is there, I said. That's why I'm going back. And he said to me, can you take me with you? I want to go with you because I want a family too. I want a mom and a dad too. And you can be my brother. I want to go with you. Don't leave me here. I want a mom and a dad too. And you can be my brother. I can't take you with me physically but you will always be in my heart, always. I'm leaving here, but my heart will always stay with you. And it did. He's here always. I pray for him every day, and he is under my sleeping Saint Joseph. But this story, as hard as it is for me to talk about, I don't like to talk about it because I lost touch with where he's at because he got adopted out to another family and 
they can't, they couldn't tell me anything else. So it's tough because, well, I'm just a human being, of course. But this need for family, for belonging, for community, the need to know someone who cares that I matter, that I am loved and wanted, is why we are all here. Isn't that why you come here to be blessed? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, having a family, you know, having a family is so good and wonderful that even God wanted to have a family. No one, not even God wanted to be alone. To be alone is to be in hell. I've said this before many times, but you will never meet anybody in hell. You won't ever meet anyone in hell. Hell is isolation. Heaven is community, a family. And the holy family was anything but conventional or problemless. And yet they are holy, meaning different. The word holy means different. And you know what? Your own family isn't conventional either. But your family too is holy. Because it's your family. And this family here, Divine Mercy Parish, isn't conventional either. But we are holy. Mm. So to each one of you here who comes wounded, down, or tired, seeking mercy, seeking family, seeking love, seeking hope, seeking belonging like Victor, wanting a family, I repeat again, you are my family. You are my brothers and sisters. You know, how many of my so-called friends, now that I came back to Las Vegas, who said they were my friends, abandoned me, right? Yeah. You know, dropped me. Happens all the time. Uh -huh. Yeah. All the time. Bro. That's right. Because I'm now Polish National Catholic, right? They were so-called friends, huh? When they needed me, I was always there for them. But now when I need them to help me start Divine Mercy Parish, they preferred rules and regulations. Huh? And the comfort of their old way of doing church than to help me remain a priest doing what I love in a healthy environment. I see many of those people as the couple who dumped Victor because that's the environment we live in where everybody's disposable, including people. I see them in my life like the couple that dumped Victor, but not any of you because you're here and your presence, your presence, testifies to that. Mm -hmm. And if I hadn't said it before, um, I, I don't just thank you for being here. I love you, and I hope that you don't just know that, but that you feel that, you know, because anybody is saying, oh, words aren't worth the breath it takes to say them unless they're accompanied by actions. Huh? And no matter who has dumped you in your life, I will never dump you because God will never dump you. You're all stuck with me, whether you like it or not. Mm? We are a family. Mm? And all of you who are here reinforce my faith that God loves me, that I am not alone, and that I will be fine that everything is going to be okay. And that's why I'm in your life as well. To do the same. And that's why we are in each other's life. To do the same. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
And let's stand together as we profess our faith today. I believe in one God. 